Hi everybody, welcome. Today we will be covering the Ottoman Turkish alphabet and I would like to very quickly recap all of the letters uh, in this alphabet chart so that you can have a solid foundation moving forward. Uh, to add some context, this was likely the chart that children were taught when they were learning the alphabet. And to give you a primer, uh, since Ottoman Turkish is a cursive script, every letter has an initial, medial, and final form and I don't want you to be intimidated by this at all. This is no different than if you're writing in cursive in the Latin alphabet. It doesn't matter what language it is, be that English or Turkish, if you're writing cursive in any of those languages, it's really the same story. You have an initial, medial, and final form. Not a big deal, and most of the forms look the same anyway. Um, besides that, we have the name in the Latin alphabet, and then we have the name in the Ottoman alphabet. Besides this, now we have the modern Turkish uh, representations of the letters and then we have the sounds represented as per the international phonetic alphabet if you don't know what how the modern Turkish alphabet or the international phonetic alphabet work I highly recommend you go and learn those first uh, we will be making extensive use of them in this uh, series and it's very important that you know it you really can't make any progress without knowing these so please go and learn them and then you can come back to this Without further ado, let's now get into the letters. The first one we have here is Hemze. Now this is not really uh, the first letter of the alphabet. The first letter of the alphabet is actually Elif. But Hemze is being included here for the sake of thoroughness. In the modern Turkish alphabet, Hemze is usually not represented. Uh, and sound-wise, it doesn't tend to make a sound unless we're talking about very formal speech where it can represent the glottal stop. The true first letter of the alphabet is elif. In the modern Turkish alphabet, this makes the a and the e sound, a and e. And this is one of the letters that is a non-joining letter. Now, I'm going to go into what this means in a little bit more detail in the future. But for now, let's just sit tight and look at all of the letters in the alphabet and their initial, medial, and final forms. So, the third, or the second letter, I should say, is b, makes the b sound. Uh, the third letter is p, makes the p sound. Next letter is T, makes the T sound. Letter after that is S, makes the S sound. This is only found in Arabic loanwords. Next we have J, making the J sound of English, but represented with the C in the Turkish alphabet. Uh, but it makes the J sound. Then we have Chim, making the CH sound in English, represented with this letter in Turkish. Uh, ch, that's the sound that it makes. And then Ha and H also both make the H sound. H can have a little bit more variation, but they generally uh, don't tend to appear in Turkic words. Ha only appears in Arabic loan words. Uh, dal makes the D sound. Zan makes the Z sound, only really found in Arabic loan words. Re makes the R sound. Z makes the Z sound. And J doesn't really have a letter equivalent in the English language, but it does appear in the English uh, phonology such as in the word pleasure. And one note that I want to make about these five letters is that they're all non-joining letters just like elif. I hope you begin to see a pattern forming. And we will cover these in a little bit more down the line, but let's finish the alphabet chart for now. Then we have sin, making the S sound. Then we have shin, making the SH sound. Then we have sud, also making the S sound, usually found in Arabic loanwords. There's a special note here that'll be discussed in the future. Then we have dud. It's a random toss-up between D and Z. It's really, it could be either one. Usually found in Arabic words. Then you have T, representing the T and the D sound. Uh, usually also only found in Arabic words. Then you have Z, representing the Z sound. Again, found almost exclusively in Arabic words. Then we have Ayun, again, found in Arabic words. Uh, not really pronounced with any sound in Turkish. Next up is Gayun. It's more helpful to think of this simply as a G, not so much uh, the other letters. Those are, those will be explained in a later video, but for now just think of Gayun as a normal G, like in the word gulf or goal. Then we have uh, Fe representing the F sound. Then we have Kaf and Kef. These both represent K, but there's a special note that distinguishes them. Then we have Gif, I also recommend you think of this as a G. Um, 
Both Gaian and Gif can be just thought of as a G. And there's a special note that distinguishes them that will be covered in the future. Then we have Nif. This is a special letter that was a conserved sound in older forms of Turkish. It's kind of like the NG sound in English, like in the word song. Uh, but in modern Turkish, it just makes the N sound, N as in Nancy. Then we have Lum, uh, representing the classic L sound. Then we have Mim with M, Nun with N. And at the very end, we have the three semivowels, Vav for uh, V in terms of the consonant pronunciation. Then we have He for H. Then we have Ye for Y. And they can all uh, represent vowels as well, but we'll cover that a little bit later. For right now, all I want you to appreciate is how to write them. Vav is also another non-joining letter, kind of like these five, and also like an if. Then we have he, whose initial, medial, and final forms are quite different from each other. As I'm sure you've noticed, most of the letter forms are all the same. He is an exception. You'll just have to memorize it, but it's really not that big of a deal. And then ye also kind of sticks out by having quite a distinct uh, final and isolated form. You can see with nun, the underlying form of both ye and nun is the same, except nun has one dot here, ye has two dots, but it's the uh, final form that really makes a difference. And we can compare nun and ye to these four letters, where the initial medial form was the same with the exception of dot placement. Now that this has been said, we can talk a little bit more about non-joining letters. And so now I would like to cover the non-joining letters of the Ottoman Turkish alphabet. Let's begin with elif. So elif is a letter that doesn't join the letter after it. And we can symbolize this with all of our um, with all of our letters using the consonant nun. We will use this in and around the letters. So with elif, uh, at the beginning of a word, if we want to write elif nun, we would write as such. And remember, Ottoman Turkish is a right-to-left reading script, uh, script. So we are reading from right to left. In the middle and the end of a word, let's say that we begin the word with nun, and then we have elif at the end. The end form is not distinguished from the medial form. You can very clearly see that we are not joining the letters. And this holds true for all of the other non-joining forms as well. Let's scroll down and take a look at uh, these five. Again, we will see at the beginning of a word that there's no joining here. This is uh, dal nun. Then we have zal nun, re nun, z nun, and je nun. And this is what happens at the beginning. And then in the middle and in the end, it's the same exact story. So this is at the end. And then now it's in the middle. Same story. And we can see the forms replicate very much so. And I hope this is not confusing to any of our viewers, but this is simply how it works. These forms do not join the letter next to it. And this can also be said about Vav all the way down here as well. So Vav, vav similarly does not join. At the beginning of a word, we can have Vav and then Nun. And then at the middle and or end, we can write Nun first and then Vav. And we can see it is not a joining letter. So this wraps up our summary. I hope you found this informative. And in our next video, we will go over the consonants in a little bit more detail. And I hope to see you there. Thank you for watching.